let's think about the Teachers College in our hearts and minds, which touches every corner of the world every day. What is Teachers College? It's the epicenter of education, health, and psychology. It is nearly every school system, community health program, and multicultural counseling program in the United States and beyond. But it's also a coffee cart on West 120th Street. It's a speeding number one train. It's the early morning sunlight over Morningside Park. And at this uncertain moment, it's a way of being in a complicated world. Teachers College is the stuff that dreams are made of. It is a canvas on which each successive generation paints its murals. It's a universal library where we add our collective masterworks. It's a mixing board to lay down our tracks alongside the greats. Teachers College is Harlem, where we work with educators learning the neighborhood's proud history and legacy of resourcefulness and indomitable will. TC is America's community colleges, which are a gateway for underserved populations. And TC is also indelibly New York City, where we are helping schools transition to online education, bringing critically needed medical equipment to major hospitals, and providing psychological services, even as the current crisis touches us personally. But Teachers College is also Bangladesh and Lebanon, TC is Ecuador and Peru. It's Ghana and Cambodia and Bolivia. It's China and it's Europe. On almost every continent, we find TC, creating and improving schools, bringing visits to young people worldwide through hip hop pedagogy, giving displaced people new hope, working with indigenous populations to preserve their own languages, helping children with cleft palate reclaim their lives, empowering children with autism, to utter their first words. All of these people, states, and countries are Teachers College, as are all the places our students call home. It's everywhere that our graduates are shaping a healthier, better educated, more equitable, and more joyful world. TC is in our hearts and minds, as well as in every corner of the world. Graduates, families, and friends from all around the world, Welcome to the Teachers College 2020 Virtual Convocation Ceremony. Good evening, everyone. As chair of the Teachers College Board of Trustees, I have the privilege of opening tonight's convocation ceremony in a unique virtual format and to offer my warm congratulations to our 2020 graduates. We just saw who and what Teachers College is today. Many, many people are responsible for the wonderful things you saw in the video, but I want to especially acknowledge our students, faculty, and all of our staff for the strength and perseverance they've demonstrated over the past few months. This has been an extraordinary time, and it has taken an heroic effort to get us to this graduation ceremony today. Thank you all. As a descendant of TC's founder, Grace Dodge, I want to take a moment to reflect on our history because Grace's vision has never mattered more than today. Over 130 years ago, Grace initially sought to equip young immigrant women for life in a new society but she soon saw the need for teachers with the knowledge and skills to meet these and other learners on their own cultural turf. Whether the focus was literacy or nursing or nutrition, TC students learned how to teach and who they were teaching. Over TC's history, that approach, approach has shaped new fields from education psychology to urban education that have addressed each era's most pressing problems. All of you who are graduating tonight are the legacy of that ongoing creative ferment. Many of you will teach, tapping the combination of theory and practice that only TC provides. Others will advance human well being as principals and superintendents, as artists and art administrators, as psychologists and health practitioners, and as leaders of every stripe. But in this unprecedented moment in time, all of you will join with TC as we once again develop new solutions for old 
and new problems alike. Beyond recognizing what you have just accomplished, your degrees signify your partnership with the best minds in your field, your ability to lead, and your readiness to help a world that needs you as never before. Congratulations. And now it is my very great pleasure to introduce and to thank for his leadership in this difficult time, the president of Teachers College, Thomas Bailey. To our graduates, their friends and loved ones worldwide, good morning or good afternoon or good evening. In this season where so many dreams have been dashed and so many lives and livelihoods have been lost, I wish we could all experience the joy of live in-person convocations and doctoral hooding ceremonies. But we're here nonetheless to celebrate your achievements. And given these unforeseen circumstances, they're all the more impressive. So let's look at some of the good things that have come out of this wrenching experience, because each reflects directly on our graduates and all of the members of our community. The first has been an outpouring of kindness and generosity among the general population, and certainly among our graduates. While completing your coursework, defending your dissertations, and managing so much additional stress, you have inspired all of us with so many acts of kindness. You've helped deliver mail packages and groceries to fellow students who couldn't return home, or arrange for the transport of personal protective equipment to doctors and nurses at the front lines, or volunteered to tutor their kids in math. You've prepared live weekly readings for young children of our faculty and staff, or brought the TC community together to enjoy live musical performances. The second good thing that has come out of this experience has been the discovery that our students are a lot more determined, adaptive, and resilient than perhaps even they realized. My faculty and staff colleagues and I are proud of the college's swift and successful transition to virtual course instruction. But equal credit goes to all of you. You've been incredibly patient and understanding You've enriched your classes even further while making enormous contributions to TC's research and work with practitioners. You've worked with TC faculty to help teachers in time zones worldwide design and implement effective online pedagogies and strategies. You've counseled high school students at all hours through their own turmoil and uncertainty in their lives and you've continued offering psychological counseling, including to military veterans and many who have lost their jobs and can no longer pay the nominal fee. None of you signed up to have your entire world turned upside down, but all of you have risen to every challenge and passed much harder tests of your character and capabilities than anyone could have bargained for. The third good thing to come out of this experience has been a surge in appreciation for those in the helping professions. Producer Shonda Rhimes, who created the hit TV series, Grey's Anatomy, put it best in this priceless tweet, quote, I've been homeschooling a six-year-old and an eight-year-old for one hour and 11 minutes. Teachers deserve to make a billion dollars a year or a week teachers, school psychologists, learning specialists, mental and physical health professionals, and members of many other professions represented in this graduating class. All of them are finally getting long overdue respect and recognition for their exceptional skill, patience, expertise, stamina, and selfless devotion to those entrusted in their care. This leads to still another good thing that could come out of this crisis, the opportunity to fix what's broken, to right what's wrong, and put society on track to create a healthier, 
more equitable and more just world. As we cheer health professionals for their heroism and thank teachers for their service, for many of us from the comfort and safety of our homes, we are seeing, I mean really seeing, the people who do the hard and often hazardous work on which we depend, sometimes for our safety and survival. We at TC are so grateful to our public safety, facilities, mailroom, and payroll colleagues who have continued to work on campus. And all of us worldwide owe so much to those who grow, transport, and deliver our food, who keep our power grids functioning, who perform so many other vital tasks in the shadows. They are our fellow human beings, yet so many bear the brunt of disparities in health, education, and income that have long afflicted our society. The pandemic will likely bring about profound changes in our lives. The question is, will the society that emerges be more equitable? Or will it perpetuate all of the inequities, disparities, and divisions that put everyone's future at risk? Graduates, the answer is up to you. We need you now more than ever. We need your creativity, expertise, and commitment to social justice. We need you to illuminate the truth that we are all better off when we are all better off. This is your moment. Make it count for all of us. Congratulations. Hello to everyone at Teachers College Graduation Ceremony 2020. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. And I just want to say that you all will be embarking on professions that are some of the most important and least appreciated in society. The people who are responsible for guiding everyone else's understanding of reality so that they can function better as citizens of this world, as the electorate of a democracy. And so I, I don't, I, I can't be more impressed by what you have committed to do, the time and labor necessary to get to where you are now, the fact you're doing it in the coronaverse. <laughs> everybody at arm's reach, arm, excuse me, six feet distance from everybody else. Um, what a challenge that has been for you but more important is what an occasion for people to recognize what it is you'll be bringing to society with the degree you are earning today. So I offer my deepest appreciation for who and what you are, and more important, what you will become in this society. Congratulations. Hello to Columbia Teachers College. This is Senator Chuck Schumer. And it's my honor to address the faculty and staff, friends and families of the graduates, and most of all, you, the class of 2020. Congratulations. And I'm grateful that modern technology allows us to be connected on this very special day. The challenges of this moment are truly unique, but so has been our collective response. The fact that we're finding new ways to do things like celebrating this graduation virtually just goes to show you that New Yorkers won't let anything anything stop us from honoring what's so important. A quick word to the parents. Nothing, nothing will take your decades of hard work raising your children away, for which they, all of us, are so very grateful. Well, my message to the class of 2020 is simple. It's natural to fear the unknown and be afraid, but don't let the harshness of this current moment prevent you from seizing opportunities. They're out there. And don't forget, you have incredible assets college degree from a great institution, and loving families who will always have your back through thick and thin. Our society will overcome this pandemic, so will you. And when the worst is over, we'll need your help to rebuild our country even stronger 
than it was before. You are our future leaders, and we have faith in you. So I say to the graduates once again, congratulations, good luck, Godspeed. Hey, graduates. Oh my goodness. Congratulations on your MAs, on your PhDs. I so appreciate you and the work you're doing, the work you're going to continue to do. And I hope you are celebrating the heck out of yourselves. This is an amazing, amazing moment. And I am so excited to share it with you by any means necessary. So congratulations. Um, I see you, even though we're not in the same room, I see you, I see the work you're doing in the world, and I am truly, truly grateful. Go celebrate, have a good time, stay kind, stay safe, um, raise a glass and enjoy the moment. Nicole Hannah-Jones, like no other writer today, you have exposed the historical roots of institutionalized racism in America and linked them to the present moment when powerful forces seek to undo the gains of the civil rights era. From your coverage of Missouri's Normandy District, where in your words, generations of black students passed through without ever having attended a school that met state standards, to your unsparing analysis of why coronavirus has disproportionately afflicted Americans of color, you have illustrated precisely how structural racism has created race-based disparities that have played out for successive generations. Through your founding and leadership of the Ida B. Wells Society for Investigative Reporting, you have powerfully demonstrated the benefits of cultivating an inclusive workforce to fight against injustice in the name of democracy. And through your signature achievement, the Majestic 1619 Project, which has reached thousands of students nationwide and recently earned you this year's Pulitzer Prize for Commentary, you have made the passionate case that those ideals are even more relevant today. Where others have called desegregation a failed experiment, you argue that we somehow want this to have been easy and we gave up really fast. You remind us that the integration efforts of the 1970s and 80s were the high water mark for closing the nation's education achievement gap. And in your narration of the 1619 podcast, you assert that the civil rights movement was never just about the rights of black people. It was about making the ideals of the constitution whole. In our increasingly fragmented society, and at this dark and uncertain moment in the world, those words have never carried greater urgency. Nicole Hannah-Jones, for your clear-eyed explication of racism in America, for your deep and courageous commitment to the institution of journalism, and for your powerful call for a national unity rooted in a common humanity, we proudly award you the Teachers College Medal for Distinguished Service. I am so very honored to accept the Teachers College Medal for Distinguished Service and to be part of the Class of 2020 Convocation today. I know I do not have to tell you that the college from which you are now graduates has been a beacon in the fight for a more just society and for an equal and quality education for all of our children. To join the ranks of some of my personal heroes in receiving this honor, people such as the Brown family of the Brown v. Board of Education lawsuit, Congressman John Lewis, Kenneth Clark, and Shirley Chisholm means more to me than words can adequately express. I am sure that this is a bittersweet moment for so many of you. You worked so hard to get to this day, and I know you looked forward to celebrating in person with your classmates, educators, family, and friends. I too was looking forward to sharing this day with you. But while we cannot be together, the importance of the moment could not be more clear. We are in unprecedented times, and these unprecedented times will call for unprecedented talent and collaboration and leadership. Millions of children, college students, and educators across the country have found themselves overnight banished to a landscape of remote learning for which nearly no community was prepared. As I speak, there are millions of children who have simply disappeared from school. 
children who have no technology to access from their homes, and so therefore cannot access education. There are teachers who are struggling to convert their in-person classrooms into online learning. And those children who are already behind are falling further and further behind their more advantaged schoolmates. We have but a few short months to figure out massive and critically important questions for our education and our democracy. How and when will we return to school? How will we address the trauma of what's happened? How will we address the inequality that this pandemic has not produced, but is most certainly magnified and laid tragically bare? How will we support the physical and mental health of children, educators, and parents? How will we redesign classrooms and curriculum and student assignment policies in a way that addresses the harm that is occurring, but also creates a more equitable system in the future? So many of us who have worked in the area of educational inequality have long said that the system is so broken, the only way to fix it is to blow it up and start over. But those of us who understood that this is what was needed didn't have the power to blow the system up. Well, the pandemic has taken that out of our control. In this tragedy lies a tremendous opportunity to reinvent public education in a way that lives up to its most democratic ideals. Within a few short weeks, we discovered that we can, in fact, get rid of high stakes tests. We discovered that we can, in fact, provide technology for our most needy students to take home with them. We found out that we can treat access to broadband as a matter of equity and an educational right, and that we can focus less on grades and more on learning. But we must also be careful that disaster capitalists do not co-opt this disaster in order to push their privatization agenda as they did in New Orleans and Puerto Rico because we have also learned that there are certain things only government can and should do. As a parent struggling along with millions of Americans to homeschool my child, we have certainly come to appreciate the value of professionally trained teachers. And we have also learned that virtual education can never replace the engagement and learning and relationship building and democracy that occurs in a classroom. You all have the opportunity to lead an education revolution that safeguards the best of public education and destroys the worst. Because of the education you have received at Teachers College, few are better equipped than you to take this tragedy as an opportunity to redesign broken systems we have too long accepted. I know this day, your convocation is not what you dreamed. But if ever you were unsure of the necessity of your skills, knowledge, and passion, I could not think of a more remarkable and critical time in our lifetime to be graduating from this program. The nation is going to need your talents as never before. I am so grateful to share this moment with you all. Let's go out and make this world better for our children. Thank you. I'm New York City Council Speaker Corey Johnson, and I wanted to take a moment to recognize the 2020 graduating class of Columbia University's Teachers College. I know this is a bittersweet moment for all of you. You're not able to be with your classmates or the faculty at the college, and many of you aren't able to celebrate with your friends or your loved ones, but we as a city are with you as you begin your professional journey because we need you now more than ever. Our teachers, psychologists, institutional leaders, and health professionals are the heroes who are getting us through this very difficult time. And your decision to join their ranks is inspiring. So I wanted to say thank you for your hard work and everything you've done. And the best is yet to come. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations to the 2020 graduating class of Teachers College. This year has been challenging and difficult in ways that few of us would have imagined at the outset. But it's a tribute to your diligence and your talent and your drive that you've made it here to graduation day. Allow me to thank you for everything that you've contributed along the way, and more importantly, for everything that you will contribute throughout the course of your careers. 
The world has never needed you more than it does right now. Good luck. Hello, I'm Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, and I'm delighted to send my best wishes to Teachers College's graduating class of 2020 and recognize this moment of celebration and new beginnings. While the careers you have chosen as teachers, psychologists, institutional leaders, and health professionals may look different today than when you began your educational journey, they have never been more important than now. We are counting on you to keep people healthy, connected, and safe. And we know you will take all that you have learned at Teachers College and use it to make your mark during this global crisis and beyond. While I know many of you are separated from family and friends today, please know that the love and pride they feel for you is stronger than any divide we face. Congratulations, graduates. Hi, I'm Stephanie Rowley, Provost of Teachers College. I just wanna say thank you for those wonderful greetings. We are so glad that these distinguished friends of TC could be with us tonight to recognize our graduates in this special way. Convocation is our ultimate celebration of the intricate and beautiful tapestry we know as Teachers College. Our 10 academic departments and more than 65 programs are linked by a twin focus on how to teach and who is acquiring knowledge and skills. Equipped with this outlook, our graduates touch millions of lives around the world through their work on the front lines of their fields, some in precisely the roles they prepared for here and others in ways that we never could have dreamed of. I will now present master's students who are graduating from our departments of Arts and Humanities, Curriculum and Teaching, Mathematics, Science and Technology. Graduates from these departments will work in roles that range from art administration and applied linguistics, to teaching and school leadership, to software engineering and ed tech development. Collectively, they will address human potential and creativity, reimagine education for more diverse America, usher in a new digital age in teaching and learning, and build a STEM workforce that taps the full range of talents and perspectives. And now, Aman Ahmad, who's receiving her master's degree from the Department of Curriculum and Teaching, will speak on behalf of her fellow students in these three departments. Hello to all. My name is Aman Sayed Ahmed, and I am a graduate from the Department of Curriculum and Teaching at Teachers College. I'm currently speaking to you from my living room in Vila, Denmark. I wanna to talk to you about the Ouroboros an ancient symbol that depicts a snake biting its own tail. The Ouroboros represents the cyclical nature of life. For me, the Ouroboros has been a symbol of hope and groundedness for the last few years. During these perilous times, the Ouroboros is a timeless reminder that with every ebb, there is a flow, striking a cosmic balance that goes beyond us as individuals to envelop us as families, communities, and societies. During times like these, our responsibility to ourselves and those around us is only magnified. Our commitment to spreading joy, to inciting positive change, and to teaching compassion and empathy deepens. And it is up to us to find the ebb to this flow. It's kind of like missing the one train on your way to class and using it as an opportunity to play a round of words with friends on your phone. Graduates, let us seize this occasion that celebrates our accomplishments as a catalyst for bearing our humanness, for multiplying compassion and kindness to counterbalance the uncertainty and fear we are all experiencing. Let us empower our communities by inspiring them to show empathy toward ourselves and one another, and to celebrate the humanity of us all. To our loved ones, join us in serving as agents of change and ambassadors for love. Graduates, congratulations to us. May we always use our positions as Teachers College Columbia University grads to uplift and empower. 
May we all continue to remember that even when times are difficult and unpredictable, there will always be reasons to celebrate. To our loved ones, thank you for all you have done for us and for all you will continue to do. Cheers to the Teachers College Class of 2020. Wow, that was beautiful. Thank you from all of us to Natalie for that wonderful performance. I now present master's students who are graduating from TC's departments of biobehavioral sciences, counseling and clinical psychology, education policy and social analysis, and health and behavior studies. Graduates of these departments will become speech language pathologists and exercise physiologists, psychotherapists and career counselors, policy advisors and public officials, special education teachers and diabetes care managers. Collectively, they will help bridge the gap in understanding the links between the brain, cognition and behavior, address the psychological needs of individuals and families across cultures, and fight for equity in education and champion inclusion for all learners. And now Rachel Norman, 
who is receiving her master's degree from the Department of Education Policy and Social Analysis, will speak on behalf of her fellow students in these four departments. Hi, I'm Rachel Norman, and I'm speaking to you from the corner of 129th and Convent in Harlem. The streets are quiet. The pace is slow. While we are now at rest, we must resist and then rise. I arrived in the Big Apple in 2018 with big dreams to become the U.S. Secretary of Education. I was certain that only Teachers College could help me get there. But my confidence quickly faded in the hustle and bustle of New York City. I juggled four classes, three jobs, barely making ends meet. I often struggled to find my voice and speak up in classes. To be honest, I wanted to drop out. But then I found my tribe, a group of friends who were all exhausted like me and all wrestling with the same questions. Was coming to TC a mistake? Do I even belong here? The problems of the world are so great and nobody has solved them yet. So how could I, of all people, make a difference? These questions brought me to what my mother calls the edge of a breakdown or a breakthrough. See, I found Integrate NYC an organization that's a home to a community of teen activists. And they were wrestling with a different set of questions. Why are New York City schools so segregated? What does an integrated system even look like? And how do we turn that dream into a reality? Finally, I found my footing and everything began to click. I started putting all of the theory I was learning from TC into practice. I now have the privilege of working alongside these students and advocating with them for a school system where all of us can thrive. A system that gives students the tools to unlock their potential and unleash their power. A system that allows youth to find their voice and build a legacy of healing divides and transforming lives. TC has provided its graduates with the knowledge and experience to bring this system to life. We have sharpened our ability to think critically and act courageously. And more importantly, the greatest gift Teachers College has ever given us is each other. My invitation to the graduating class of 2020 is simple. Rest, resist, then rise. Rest in community. Rest in knowing that your TC education has laid a foundation for you to be a change agent. Resist with community. Resist the pull to give up on the convictions that led you to this moment. Then rise as a community. Rise up because justice does not simply emerge. It must be envisioned, then fought for. So fellow graduates, let's rise up. So we use technology to shorten the distance created by social distance. From WhatsApp, Flipgrid, to Zoom. It's funny how life forced us to sit still so we could finally hear that laughter in the room. Now do you see what matters? Like a thought trapped in a room, we, we pushed ourselves beyond extremes. We imagined a new reality and we took hold of our dreams encoded our visions, laid it with pride, foundated with love. We're no longer trapped inside. Time, truly a gift from the heavens, I'd say. Now that the world sees us for who we are, we're saying on this day, masters and doctors, look how our thoughts became things. Our imagination took hold, and if we remember this, we're prepared for whatever obstacle life brings. Now do you see what matters? So we wrote as representatives of our groups. But when we spoke, we were recognized as leaders. And with our right hands, we shared our knowledge. That's why they call us mind feeders. See, we move like our hands, like our hands that move like us. Before the lies, before fake news, there was once a thing called trust. So you know what we wrote as representatives of our groups. But when we spoke, we were recognized as their leaders and with our right hands, that's W-R-I-T-E hands. We shared our knowledge. That's why they call us mind feeders. Our hopes and dreams watered our seeds to ambition. So you know
know when we roll with the fires that sparked our dreams. We roll with the fires of our befores and afters. We roll through our pain and our memories of laughter. Before and after, like cause and effect, like choosing the path and read so many, so many, so many books and articles to our necks. So we wrote for us and those without a voice, we spoke for them and harnessed the power of we. I said we wrote for us and those without a voice, we spoke for them and we harnessed the power of we. We wrote with the fire that beats our heart. We wrote for the people who were there from the start. We wrote and we're still writing because we're still a member of that group and we never forgot because after our struggles we presented with glory and after we, after we, after we picked up a pen, we wrote our story and we used technology to shorten the distance created by social distance from WhatsApp, Flipgrid to Zoom. It's funny how life forces all to sit still so we can finally hear that laughter in the room. Now do you see what matters. Peace. I will now present the master's students graduating from our departments of Human Development, International and Transcultural Studies, and Organization and Leadership. Graduates of these departments will become data scientists and education measurement experts anthropologists and heads of non-governmental organizations, and conflict negotiators and deans of student life. Collectively, they will shift the focus of education systems to improving learning rather than ranking performance. They will refashion a world that will no longer exclusively privilege a Western Eurocentric perspective in education development and they will create new approaches for enabling organizations of all kinds to leverage the full power of human diversity. And now, our final master's student speaker, Wu Jung Amber Kim, who is receiving her master's degree from the Department of International and Transcultural Studies, will speak on behalf of her fellow students in these three departments. Hello everyone, my name is Amber Kim and I have the honor of sharing a few words with you today from Seoul, South Korea. Thank you President Bailey, Provost Rowley, faculty, staff, graduates and alumni for your unwavering support. I want to give a special shout out to my IED fam, the Aura staff, and to my family who's watching this online. Our moment for celebration has been redefined by a global crisis. We are here today celebrating our TC journey virtually. I first want to take a moment to acknowledge that we have all experienced loss this past semester. Some among us have lost friends, loved ones, others have faced physical and mental health challenges. Personally, I mourn the loss of face-to-face -face discussions with my classmates on the second floor of Gottsman Library, the tossed salads from Grace Dodge Dining Hall, and the chance to celebrate this occasion with all of my friends, family, and classmates in person. However, I realize that we have so much to celebrate today. Through the crisis, our memories and accomplishments of our time at Teachers College have been redefined for the better. For example, the current travel restrictions have made me even more grateful for the opportunity I had to collaborate with Indigenous teachers in Cambodia for my IP last summer. I will forever cherish watching my first Broadway musical after winning OSA student tickets with my friends and the extra 15 minutes spent with my advisor, sharing her experiences and wisdom with me during office hours. As we reflect on the entirety of our TC experience, we each have many redefined moments that are worth celebrating. Today, I also want to celebrate the incredible adaptability and perseverance we've shown as a class to finish the semester strong. From providing voluntary tutoring services for the families of Columbia healthcare workers, to standing in solidarity with their classmates against racism towards the Asian community. Our class proved that the same passion that brought us to TC is still with us today. Our firsthand experience of living through this crisis has redefined us. We are now marked by a spirit of resilience and the call to pursue a better and more equitable future. As we step into this next chapter of our lives, we will face many uncertainties, but the uncertainty comes with a silver lining. We have the invaluable opportunity 
to redefine our respective fields as future researchers, educators, leaders, and advocates for change. The world will be watching and depending on us to accomplish great things. So cheers to being redefined and congratulations to us all. The extraordinary class of 2020. Soli Deo Gloria. Thank you. And now I present to you the 2020 doctoral degree recipients of Teachers College. These dedicated individuals are completing an extraordinary journey that has challenged them not only as scholars, but also as parents of young children, partners of equally hardworking spouses and lovers, and caretakers of elderly parents or other family members in need, especially during this difficult time. We acknowledge the sacrifices they have made and we applaud their fierce work ethic their courage and patience, and their phenomenal achievement. Now they stand at the headwaters of their fields, poised to make an impact that will include the shaping of questions, goals, and practices in many of our society's most fundamental areas of endeavor. And now we, their former professors, administrators, and mentors, formally acknowledge them for what, in so many ways, they already are, our colleagues, doctoral recipients, the mission of Teachers College is to apply the knowledge we generate to building a better world. You have already contributed so much to that effort, and you embark now upon careers in which you will contribute so much more. You are the ultimate standard bearers of our college, and we are very, very proud of you. Godspeed. Hello teachers, college graduates, congratulations on your accomplishment. Now I know this isn't how any of us expected to be celebrating the class of 2020, but even though we can't be together in person, I am no less inspired by you. Years ago, I wrote a book called It Takes a Village. Some of you may know the full proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, that sentiment has been on my mind a lot these days, and not only because of my wonderful grandchildren, but over these last months, I've been inspired by all of the educators who are finding new ways to be part of that village. We've seen everything from creative examples of Zoom classes to parades where teachers drive through neighborhoods to wave and reassure young students. As we navigate the future, building a strong village is even more crucial. And it fills me with hope to think about all of the teachers, scholars, school leaders, psychologists, health educators, economists, policy analysts, conflict resolution specialists, artists, really everyone who will play an essential role in making sure we are not only rebuilding, but building back stronger for our children. So thank you for choosing such an important and impactful path. And most of all, congratulations. Queridos graduandos y familiares, dear graduates and relatives, congratulations. It is a joy to celebrate this academic milestone with you. As a Puerto Rican who was also a first-generation graduate student, I grasp what this moment means to you, especially during these distressing times. Graduates, I admire your strengths and commitments and your acute awareness of how important your efforts are for your communities, for other students of color, for trans and gender diverse students. As an advisor to TC's Coalition of Latino Scholars, for example, I have seen firsthand your leadership efforts to improve the educational context for Latinx students at Teachers College and beyond. In this way, contributing to your ancestors' struggles for survival, social justice, and liberation. Like many of you, I come from a working class family. My parents played a major role in my success, first by adopting me, by offering their unconditional love and instilling in me a love for learning. No, they didn't read me bedtime stories the way that middle class parents might have, but education was a constant in my mother's consejos. And here I am, 
a scholar on bilingual education who honors and promotes the cultural and linguistic resources of our bilingual communities. Parents, your efforts will prove worthwhile. Lastly, graduates, I want to thank you for making my own work and that of my faculty colleagues so much more interesting and purposeful, and for inspiring us at TC to keep reimagining new ways to honor diversity of voices and experiences in our teaching and policies. And now, it is my pleasure to read a collage of words drawn from the individual letters you wrote to your loved ones, which will be available on the Redesign Convocation website. Dear Mama and Papa, I still remember the first day you went home after bringing me to New York City. I was crying because it was the very first time that I would be separated from my family. I finally realized why you pushed me so hard, because you always wanted something better for me and you knew I could do better. As I closed this chapter of my life and received my degree, words cannot give justice to how grateful I will always be. I love you all. Mama, tú me enseñaste a ser fuerte. Prácticamente me subiste al avión para cumplir logros que no te dejaron. Fue difícil llegar hasta acá, pero aquí, en esta ceremonia, me lo reconocen. Y a ustedes, mami y papi, ¿cuándo se ganaron la medalla de oro por trabajar sin descansar todos los días de la semana? Yo debo hacer lo mismo y trabajar sin descanso. El México que son ustedes para mí, lo llevaré siempre en mi corazón. Los amo. Dear mom, you were born in Vietnam during the Vietnam War. A stamp of discrimination was forever sealed for prisoners and their children. Thus, you were forbidden to attend college. Privileged to receive an education, I inherited the responsibility of excelling while challenging the status quo. Our stories are counter narratives to the bleak narratives of poverty and failing urban education. As I graduate from Teachers College, I hope to embody your fighting spirit. Thank you, Mom. To my little shining star, Mommy wanted an MA from Teachers College, Columbia University. And listen, as of today, Mommy is the first in our family to complete a master's degree in the United States. I promise you, this was for us, the us that loves us that accepts our dark skin. So long as I live, I promise to only surround you with love. And I promise you that this degree means we will never be homeless in New York City again. It's mommy's turn to help the family now, because in our Filipino culture, we take care of each other. We share our blessings. Querida mami, Quiero que sepas de mis labios y mi corazón que te amo y agradezco su tiempo, su amor. He logrado saber de tus desvelos. Aquí estoy sirviendo a mi comunidad como me enseñaste. De verdad, nadie me enseñó cómo perseverar como usted. This diploma, como siempre, es para ti, para nuestra familia. Gracias, ma. Mom, you immigrated from the small village of San Marcos, Guatemala. And that you immigrated from the bustling city of Istanbul. You both came here with nothing and gave us everything. You taught me how to be human first and that our concern for the welfare of others will serve as our driving force in life. That your young Turk will forever continue your legacy. I miss and love you with every fiber in my body. Congratulations, we accomplished this degree. Thank you for everything. Congratulations, alumni, and welcome to the Alumni Association. We are thrilled to have you joining our network of over 90,000 alumni worldwide. We are your Alumni Association. We are dedicated to supporting students and alumni. We are concerned about the mind, the body, and even spirit of each member of our community. We are educators and researchers. We are critical thinkers. We are doers and trailblazers. 
We are entrepreneurs and innovators. We are heads of school and heads of state. We are organizational leaders, coaches, and consultants. We are K-12 leaders and administrators. We are thought leaders dedicated to inclusion and diversity. We are wellness providers dedicated to improving mental and physical health. We are leaders in higher education. We are artists, musicians, and creators. We are students, teachers, and collaborators. We are lifelong learners and advisors. Mentors and friends. We are all over the world. We are your peers. We are your network. And we are here for you. Welcome to your Alumni Association. Astronaut Krista McAuliffe, America's teacher in space, said, reach for it. Push yourself as far as you can. I think we should aim not for what we think is possible, but for what we dream could be. Class of 2020, you are graduating into a world that has been rocked by the disruption of a lifetime. But in many ways, for educators like us, it is also the opportunity of a lifetime. At this moment, teachers are more visible than ever as parents wrestle with home learning. Our creativity and grit have never been more needed. This pandemic has exposed the inequities, the challenges, and yet the opportunities of 21st century schools. Together, we will rebuild and reimagine what our schools and classrooms could be, if only we have the courage to bring them to life. And in that way, our voices have never been more powerful. Today, you become a graduate of Columbia Teachers College. But what makes you an educator goes deeper. It's a gift that you share with the world. It's the gift of changing someone's life, of seeing someone's potential, even when it is hidden to themselves. And you will get so much in return, trust, adventure, the secrets of your students' hopes and fears. There will be days when you laugh so hard you cry and days when the sorrow doesn't stop. I can't promise you that it will be easy, but I can promise that there won't be a time when you don't feel proud to say, teaching is not what I do, it's who I am. Congratulations, class of 2020. Thank you, Dr. Biden, for those inspiring remarks. But viewers, please don't log off. We have one more treat for you. Our 2020 virtual convocation ceremony has had two recurring themes, the extraordinary contributions and yes, heroism of our high achieving graduates and the spirit of community that has united this class in common purpose. We've seen, indeed we are seeing right now that TC is much more than a physical space. We're a community of scholars and helping professionals, all thinkers, doers and leaders collaborating across time and distance to make a positive difference in the world. Our physical campus address is on West 120th Street, known as TC Way, but our neighborhood spans the globe where everyone is connected and all are welcome. We are fortunate to call our neighbors in Harlem and Morningside Heights our partners and friends. Indeed, the spirit of friendship that has strengthened our ties with all of our neighbors over the years continues to sustain us now. So it is only right that we end this ceremony in the same spirit of friendship. As each of our graduates' names scrolls across the screen, we will be treated to a special performance of Beethoven's celebrated third symphony, the Eroica, by a musical ensemble that is in fact based here on Morningside Heights the Manhattan School of Music Student Orchestra. 50, 50 MSM students gathered together to create this gift for TCE graduates. 
What you are about to hear represents a triumph of ingenuity and a reminder how the whole can be more than the sum of its individual parts. In this case, 50 individually recorded parts. I cannot think of a more fitting tribute to our graduates' achievements and courage than to score the virtual call of their names with the Eroica. <laughs> Thank you. 